Hello and welcome. I am Jenny with Go Box Art Crate. And today this particular video is for made specifically for fossil distance learning and we're going to paint a wonderful and fun colorful panda today. It's really easy to do. I'm going to guide you through each step. You can paint along whether you are with the school or not. All you have to do is have the right colors or use your own colors. So in your guys' kit that you got, you have black and white. We'll be using mostly these colors. And then the rest of these are just fun accent colors. So we have our Bahama Blue, our Craft Yellow, and this is called Thalo Red. You can mix it with white and make a really nice light pink. You can also mix these two together and it makes kind of a lavender color, sort of on the grayish side, but it is really pretty. And then we'll, we'll actually end up mixing these two together. They make a really fun kind of lime green. So let's go ahead and look at our brushes. So in your guys' kit, you got the 10 pack, which has way more sizes than we actually need, but that's kind of fun because then you can have a lot of brushes to use for future projects, or you have your pick of what to use in different steps of this painting. Right now, I want to find one of these either of these two larger ones because we're going to cover the whole canvas in black. It's going to take a little work, but we can do it. So you should have on hand a paper towel to dry your brushes off after you clean them and some kind of old cup to put water in to clean your brushes. So let's pick up one of your, whatever biggest brush you have. Go ahead and dip it in your water cup. Just kind of brush it back and forth to loosen up the bristles and wake them up, get them ready to paint. I like to do this because it does make the brush bristles, brush bristles, it's kind of hard to say, makes them a little flexible and that's nice to work with. But when you dry it off on your towel, make sure you dry it off really good. So one thing I do sometimes, I don't know if you can see on camera, yeah, you can. I just fold the towel over it and then pull the brush out. And that really gets all the water off of this part too. So we're gonna take black, and I know it seems funny, but we're gonna paint the whole canvas black. Let's start on this right side because our panda ends up being over here. And that way, by the time we've worked all the way across here, this, this particular part we started with will have dried enough that we can start painting the panda on. So you just need to do a really thin coat. So see how I'm spreading it out? This part's kind of cool because you can sort of see an abstract painting emerging. <laughs> like this could be all kinds of things. Like a big tree, that's what it looks like, a big tree with tree bark. But we're gonna turn this into a panda. Now, um, you just need a thin coat. If you see little white speckles here and there, that's okay because the panda is gonna cover most of that and any that show up over here later, you can just touch up with another coat of black later. So pandas are one of my favorite animals. I think they're so cute. They actually remind me a lot of my little fluffy dog. She acts a lot like a panda. <laughs> the videos I've seen of pandas, they're kind of mischievous. And my gosh, so cute. You just want to cuddle one. And they seem like they really like to uh, tease their trainers. <laughs> Pretty funny. Oh yeah, working my way across here. My particular canvas has a funny line through it from the manufacturing. But I'm gonna use this one because sometimes I get damaged canvases in like this one. And rather than having myself use a brand new canvas that's perfect, I'll just use some of these ones that have little flaws. Don't really know what happens there, but Something with the machinery. <laughs> well, I hope you guys are enjoying March, and I know, I think most of you guys are in Oregon, if not all of you. And uh, I enjoyed the little bit of snow we had a couple weeks ago. Some of you probably got more, <laughs> and some of you maybe didn't get any or just got less. Like we got about, I wanna say it was about six inches. And that was a nice little break. It was so pretty. I especially love walking my dogs in the snow and they, they seem to really like it a lot too. So I know you guys also have spring break coming up. That's pretty fun. Hopefully you're, have something, you'll have something to do. Maybe some arts and crafts and maybe you're traveling. 
I usually don't travel on spring break because it seems to be like everyone's traveling. So we end up staying home and having fun, doing some baking, that kind of thing, doing some artwork. So you can see most of my brush strokes, I'm going up and down like this, but you honestly, you can paint any direction you want. You could go side to side, you could zigzag it on there, just as long as you get a nice thin coating of black. Now with my lighting situation here, I'm gonna scoot this up just a bit. I'm getting a little bit of glare from the black, but once it dries, it won't be quite as bad. That's another way that I can tell if the paint's still wet. How much it glares. This particular brand of paint has some kind of small amount of shine in it though. So when it dries, it is always slightly shiny, which I actually like. Some projects I might use a, a more matte finish, but for most of my projects, I do like having that small bit of shine. So you guys just get to uh, where you have the whole front painted. Some of you will be faster, some of you will be on the slower side. It does not matter at all, just as long as we all end up in the same place. Sometimes I go fast, sometimes I go slow. I've done a ton of painting in my life, so I've gotten the, the background thing down where I do it pretty fast, so I apologize if it felt too fast. I'm just gonna wash my brush off. You guys just keep, keep catching up. We need this to dry just a little bit, so that's what we'll do. We'll hang out and let it dry. So I pulled up a little list of panda facts. They're pretty fun. Let's see what, what we can learn while you guys are waiting for this to dry a bit and while you're finishing up. Adopt a panda, ooh, that'd be fun. I'm on a website called www.f.org.uk. The giant panda's distinct black and white markings have two functions, camouflage and communication. Most of the panda, its face, neck, belly, rump is white to help it hide in snowy habitats. Huh, fun. The arms and legs are black, helping it to hide in the shade. I love the little black ovals around their eyes. They're just so cute. So their eyes are different to normal bears. I'm gonna move my computer over here so I'm not turning away so much. Like domestic cats, giant panda bears have vertical slits for pupils. Oh, that's something new I just learned. I had no idea of that. Pandas can swim and even climb trees. Well, I knew they could swim. I mean, I knew they could climb trees, but swimming is something I didn't realize they could do. Very cool. They spend a lot of their day eating. <laughs> 10 to 16 hours a day feeding, mainly on bamboo. You know, for a big bear, bamboo is not a big filling thing. And so <laughs> I imagine you'd have to eat for 10 to 15 hours in order to feel full when you've got that big roly-poly body like that. So there were a few facts. You guys can check out that website if you want, or just, I just Googled facts about pandas. That's kind of fun to learn some new stuff. Slitted eyes, that is the weirdest thing. I had no idea. Okay, so let's take a look at our brushes. Your canvas can still be a little bit wet when we start this part, because we're gonna build on it. So your panda will end up being kind of gray at first because the white and black are gonna mix together. And then as we, um, as the canvas, the black dries, we'll build and add more white to the panda. So let's see here, let's pick out a medium sized brush. Just one of these flat ones is good. Let's see, what is this? So you usually have a number. This has number four on it. You can use that one or you can use the other one that's very similar that has a number six. They look almost identical. So I'm gonna take this brush, just like the other brush, I'm gonna dip it in the water cup, brush it across the bottom of the cup. Dry it off really good. Make sure you get that metal part dried. And we're gonna sketch out our panda. So we're going to use white to sketch it out. And here is where if you sketch something out and you don't like it, because the background is all black, you can literally just paint right over it. And you can do it later or you can do it um, right away. 
but uh, yeah, you're not stuck with anything that you paint here. So what we have is like three quarters of the panda head showing. So it's going to be a half, well, more than, it's going to be a three quarter circle that goes out beyond the halfway point. So it's going to curve way out here and come down rounded, nice little rounded chin, and then we're going to have a little shoulder showing. So let's find a couple points. Let's drop down about maybe an inch, about this far from the top, make a mark. And we're going to go out, just dot it in. That way it's sort of non-committal. We're gonna go, just make sure you go past the halfway point. And we, we can round this out further. I mean, it can be kind of square at first because we're just sketching it on. So see how I've, I'm doing a rounded chin now? There. So just sketch yours on as close as you can to that. It's about, if I were to calculate, it's about an inch. Mine is about an inch to the left of center. It could have gone a little further out. I'm just like painting a three quarter moon here. <laughs> and the shoulder is just right about here where this starts rounding into the chin. I'm just gonna do a dotted line that goes off. They're, they're roly poly bears, so it can be kind of rounded. The ear is fun and easy. It's just a big, it's basically this exact same shape right off the side here, nice and round. And then we get to start having some fun with this guy. So I think what I wanna do first, just thinking here, let's draw the little oval. Now if you need to use a smaller round brush for this part, like maybe one of these, Feel free to do that. Some of you maybe draw a little bit better with a small pointy brush. I've gotten so used to drawing with a flat brush, but I do use the thin edge of this brush. So let, let's do it, make some markings. Let's, uh, so I wanna find what would be about the middle of his head. So over here, we'd have another ear and the rest of the face. So the middle of his head is probably gonna be right about here. You can do just a dotted line, it gets covered up. And then over in here somewhere, I'm gonna make an oval shape that's sort of angled outward. It's almost like a ghost eye, that's what it looks like. And you might have room to show part of the other eye. I don't really think I do though, but if you have room, when I've done this painting before, sometimes I have, oops, fly away brush. Sometimes I have um, part of the other eye showing, but in this particular case, I'm looking at the distance between here and here and here and here. And if I squeezed another eye in there, it wouldn't look quite right. So I'm gonna leave it with just the one eye. And then, oops, didn't mean to do that. I'm gonna wash my brush real quick. Now I'm gonna sketch in where I want the nose to be. So they have kind of a, a like most bears, they have a snout that comes down. And so way down here, just above the chin, I'm going to sketch in a little upside down triangle shape. Now it's kind of a wide triangle, triangle, sorry. And see how I've centered it on this dividing line. And now let's go ahead and we're gonna fill in the whole face. So I wanna use a little bit bigger brush. So we're gonna leave the nose black and we're gonna leave this eye patch black. And um, before we do away with this brush, let's go ahead and sketch the inner ear. So that's that inner circle here. Make it nice and furry. And let's wash the brush. Dry it off and then go back to one of your big ones just to get the face filled in. Now for the brush strokes on this, I like to use kind of a furry brush stroke. Let's see how I'm, uh, see how I'm kind of tapping it and lifting the brush. And it is kind of gray because of the black being wet. That's okay for now. We'll fix it up. But see how I'm giving it sort of a furry texture? That's what we wanna do. I'm just starting with the forehead. We're gonna cover up our dotted line there like it never was. When you're drawing an animal or a human face or anything like that, dividing things up with a dotted line is how you get the right ratio of like the distance between the eyes and you can divide it in this way this way too and that's what I do when I'm sketching a human figure human face 
then you have, when you divide it in half this way, you have a nice eye line that you can line up both eyes. They call that the golden ratio. Oh, hey, look at that. He's already got head fur. <laughs> Just coming down here. It's actually been a little while since I've recorded a video. It took me about a half hour to remember how to set up the microphone and all of that because there are so many different little things I have to plug in. So I need to probably make more of a habit of recording these individual project photos or videos, I mean. So as I'm coming down here, see how I'm sort of flicking the fur out into the background? I use the thin edge of the brush to do that. And you can have bits of the black background showing through. That's just going to make it more textured looking, which they are fuzzy and textured for sure. So we're gonna leave the shoulder black and the ear black, but we will refine them so they're not just sketched on there without any further developing. So down here on the chin, the fur is gonna grab, gravity is gonna make it grow downward this way, well, hang downward. And also the way that the fur grows on the face. All right, getting down to the nose. Now it's okay if you accidentally overlap into this nose because we're gonna clean it up later. So if you accidentally get a little fur in there, that's totally fine. So one thing I like about this type of paint is you just paint over. Anything you make a mess up on, you just paint over or sometimes some of those little things that you think are mess ups end up being some good unexpected thing. I've had that happen so many times where I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have to cover that up. And then I come back to it a day or two later. I'm like, actually, I kind of like that. I'm gonna keep it. <laughs> okay, yeah, definitely looking a little more gray than white, especially up here where I first started down here. It's already dried a bit, but we're going to layer. Now I will take and get some furry brush strokes out this way. Now feel free to switch to a smaller brush. You absolutely can. So even though down here is black, this is just going to kind of show where the shoulder is. I think of it like a light, like maybe the moon is out and it's it's glancing off this little shoulder area so it's more lit up. <laughs> Ghost bear, that's what it looks like right now. Now I'm going to do a little bit of shading and the shading is what's going to help make this snout look like it actually exists. Like this rounds out and then the cheeks kind of scoop in a little bit more because that is exactly how they look. This, this part is gonna be rounded out more three-dimensional. Um, brush wise, I'll just use this same one and I want to make a really kind of pale gray. We'll start off with a pale gray and we'll see if we need to add more black to it. So something about like this. And then just under, right, right under this eye here, we'll see if I need to let this dry some more or if this works. I'm gonna come down until I reach the edge of the nose. I think I need to add a little more black, mainly because the white on here is still so wet that it's really overpowering my gray. So yeah, the inner corner of the, this eye patch area We'll just come down to that black nose. And then we're gonna fix this part up later so it does look like it rounds more. You can bring this down the side there. And if you have room over here, make sure you get some shading there too to match it up. And I think I will end up making the nose a little bit bigger. 
Just looking at the photos. Oh, yeah, they have cute big noses. It's been a while since I've painted a panda. Quite a while. Okay, let's leave this as it is for right now. Go ahead and wash your brush. And we're gonna clean up this area. Now, if you need to use black to clean up anything around there, you totally can. But right now, I think if we just use white, we'll make this work. So what they have is not actually a hole here. It's black fur growing into white fur. And so you can either you can either take black like this and make it go out and around like this. So see how I see how it looks like right now it looks like there's eyelashes. So that works really well or if you and I would go all the way around so it doesn't look like eyelashes. So it actually looks like there's fur around the whole eye. The other thing you can do is if you feel like this round area is too big, you can do the opposite of what I just did. Just flung one of my brushes. There, I got it. You can use white and you can, if you need to reduce the size of this, you just come in this way, all the way around. So you choose what you wanna do. Either way, it looks great. I have half and half, how about that? Since I started with the black, I might just stick with that. I was looking at the photos, and to me, it they do have a really clean edge where that black fur goes into the white, but to me it looks like the black maybe grows a little bit over the white. Either way, we just need this to look like it's furry, so I'm, I'm using my middle size brush. I'm using the thin edge of the brush, just like I did to get these furry ends. So I use the thin edge of the brush and just flick downward. And if you ended up with room for another eye socket thingy, I don't know what this is called, <laughs> then you can do that to this one too. And if you need to clean up anything on the ear, like I had a, where my brush kind of spilled over, or rolled over here. A couple speckles of white that weren't supposed to be there. You can clean that up too. Same with down in here. And I think this is still just a tiny bit too wet, but I will end up making that nose bigger. He just has a little petite nose. He needs a big sniffer. <laughs> Okay, let's see. It's drying up good. Like you can see, I rub my finger on it. I don't pick up, and well, I do pick up something, but not much. Let's go ahead and as long as this area is dry, kind of in this upper middle, we're gonna paint an eyeball on there. And so you wanna use a small pointy brush. Like I have this one and you have it in your kit too. It says two slash zero over it. That would be a good one. Or this other one that's number one. Just a small round pointy. Pointy brush. And this one, we don't really have to dip it in the water first. Just dip the very tip of the bristle. See how I picked up just a tiny bit of white? And when we draw this eyeball on, we're going to keep our pressure really light. So I don't want you to push really super hard. It's tempting, we always wanna do that, especially as your brush runs out of paint. But try to keep whisper light pressure. And I have a fuzz on mine. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, right in here in this upper part, I'm gonna draw what looks like just a soap bubble. And what it is, is it's their eye and it's just highlighted. So we're just kind of seeing the, their eye is not actually circled in white, but what we're seeing is the light source showing that eye. So their eyes are so dark that they do sort of blend in with this. But we need our guy to have an eye. And so this is how I do it. Now, if, you, if your line ended up being too thick, you can always wash your brush and dry it off and take a little black and you can literally just sort of thin out the edges of this by working from the inside or the outside and just bringing a little black in to thin out that white line. You may end up having to wait for that white to dry just a bit. Oh, now I have a broken up line, I better fix that. It's already starting to resemble a panda, which is good. <laughs> That's what we want. And then, I don't just leave the eye as a white circle or white ring. 
I'm actually going to add some highlights into it. So clean off your brush if you end up with some black on it. You just want to clean it off, have a fresh start. And I'm going to use the same brush, so small, round, pointy. Dip it in white. See, I picked up just a little white on the end. And then we're going to make a small white shine dot right here. So we'll think of it like, like I said earlier, like the moonlight is up here and it's shining down here. So this part of the eye is really grabbing a lot of light and you can make it somewhat big. And then I like to add a secondary one too. So I go drop down at an angle and I'm gonna make a smaller one. Now, if you have another eye, if you ended up with that situation where you have another eye, make sure you put your highlight, your large highlight in the upper left corner and your smaller one angled down from it at the same angle so that that light source is hitting both eyes in the right spot. And that's all we do for the eye. If you want to add to it and, you know, add color or whatever, you totally can. It's your panda. You can do whatever you want. That's the fun thing about art. You can get creative and that's how you learn. You learn what works and what doesn't work by experimenting. So feel free to do that. Now, I think this is dry enough that I can make my nose the size I want it to be. So I'm gonna take a, a little bit larger round pointy brush. This is number five. I'll go ahead and dip this in the water. You can use whatever brush size feels comfortable in your hand for drawing, redrawing the nose if you need to make yours larger. So their noses, I started with the kind of upside down triangle, but they actually are almost like somewhere between a triangle and a heart shape. So it looks like I'm drawing a little mustache, isn't that funny? <laughs> so it's gonna come down like that and like that. So it is like an upside down triangle, but just a little more rounded. So see how it makes kind of a heart shape and I need to fill that in so it doesn't look so weird. Looking much better. Definitely. And if you need to keep making it bigger, you can keep adding to it just like I did. Or if you um, need to make it smaller, let it dry, or you can even use a hair dryer and dry it really fast. I do that all the time. Um, and then come in with some white and make it smaller. So bigger or smaller, you have options either way. But he's looking pretty cute. He just needs to start turning more white and less gray. <laughs> so I am going to go back to my largest brush, I think. So this is the one we started with. It's the five slash eight, or you can use this one that's uh, just number eight. <laughs> so either one is fine. And I'm gonna use white paint again. I'll start up here on the top part of the head, which is where I started originally and the reason I'm starting there is because I know it's had time to dry whereas some of this other stuff down here is maybe still in the process of drying. So you can make a, you can flick upward. Now you can try using one of these littler brushes to get little fluffy flicks. If you want your panda to look really fluffy, that's a fun way to do it. In fact, I think I'll probably have us go around our whole panda around the edges and do that later with this brush. So I'm gonna wash this and set it aside and just plan on using it later. But for getting the main fur on, we need to use the big guy. So let's, let's start working from the top of the head down to about here, and then we're gonna change our brush strokes, and I'll show you why. Now you can leave bits of gray showing through. It doesn't have to be solid white. The reason I like leaving some of the bits of gray is because that's going to give a more three-dimensional textured look. Whenever I paint animals, that's what I do. I start with a little bit darker color than like if I'm painting a, let's say I'm painting a poodle, a white poodle. They're one of the more challenging ones to paint, a pure white animal. And so I do start, I start with a base color, either grayish or light, light brown, or uh, even sometimes like a light, light blue. And then I add the pure white fur on top and just have some selected areas where you can still see that darker color through. And that gives it more of that 3D look and less of a cotton ball look. 
Okay, so I was saying we're going to change the brush strokes here. Now you can use, I think it might be a good idea for us to switch down to one of our middle size brushes. This is number four. This, set, this guy, um, we're going to use it in a second, so you can just set it on top of your water cup or on your paper towel. We're just not going to let it sit there very long because we don't want the paint to dry on it. Let's pick up this one. I like to use the thin edge, and now I'm going to make my brush strokes go this way. So see how I'm kind of doing like a little arch, like kind of a rainbow shape, I guess. We want to keep this at the same width all the way down. So this is showing by doing the, the brush strokes this way, it's sort of indicating that this part of the nose or snout sticks out more than the other areas of the face. And we just do that by changing the direction and style of our brush strokes. So I try to make each little arch here about the same size. They can narrow, like you know how a tornado starts out wide and goes narrow? You can have that sort of thing going on so it looks like the snout is getting more narrow at the bottom. But I mean, they're pretty, they have pretty rounded, rounded snouts. I hate that word, snout, it sounds weird. <laughs> Okay, so right down here, I'm just gonna just add a little color. Okay, yeah, that looks pretty good. And now we need to make a chin. So just like cats or dogs, they have, their mouth kind of comes around like this. You know how you, your dog or cat has that? You can draw that on here. It's kind of like we're drawing a rounded W. Be careful if your nose, the black nose is still wet as you get close here, because you don't want to, you don't want to um, smear gray in here, but if you do, it's not something that's not fixable. As you know, we paint right over it, but you have to let it dry first. Now he's starting to look a little more bear-like. We will draw a mouth on in a little bit, but I want to make, down here, I want to make a lower lip. So I'm just doing a little scoop shape. And we'll paint some black in here later. But look at that, you can already see that chin emerging. <laughs> we'll especially see it when we paint the mouth on. They really do look like they have smiles too. They're so cute. You can have this, this chin can come all the way down to the bottom. In fact, I could make mine do that. Or you can have it end a little above this bottom portion. But I'm painting this pretty solid white. So, especially down in here. So I've got a lot of like, you can see a lot of gray through here and through here. I'm getting it pretty solid white so it stands out. All right, finish that up. You can always come back and re-detail this a little bit later. And if you ended up with your nose color kind of smearing into the white, just leave it for now and plan on touching it up with white later when everything dries. That's easy to do. Easier than touching it up while it's still wet and you're trying to cover gray with white. That's hard to do. Wet gray paint with wet white paint. So if you need to detail anything else up in here using this smaller brush, feel free to do that. Kind of right here where this these brush strokes change over, I like to just sort of blend the edges where those two different brush strokes meet. And you can add any more bits of white fur as needed. And like I said, later on we'll take and fluff out the edges of our bear with this brush. So he or she is super fluffy. But right now I want to, as I finish this up, I want to um, go back to this gray color. So scrape off a little white, scrape off less black, because the black really starts overpowering the white really fast. It wants to turn really dark right away. 
So I want just sort of a light to medium gray, similar to this color. You can hold your brush up to it and see if it's close. <laughs> and what I want to do now is I want to bring some of this shading down very carefully because I'm going to need to lighten that up just a little. Very carefully because we've got wet white paint here. And what I want to do with this, I need to lighten it up some more. It can be pretty light here. It doesn't have to be as dark as that. I want to, uh, okay, maybe that's too dark. I mean, too late. <laughs> I'm undecided. Okay, I want to just bring some shading down in here and see how I'm sort of flicking the brush out this way so it sort of is resembling that furry texture we've been painting. So the reason I'm doing this, bringing this darker color in here, is so that it really helps make this part stand out. So it looks like this part bumps out, this part is not bumped out as far. So that's about all I'm gonna do. If you need to do it on this side too, depending on how much of your panda is showing, feel free. I gotta touch up one spot on mine real quick, and then we're gonna go back to this larger brush. And then after we get all of this white put on here, then we get to have a lot of fun with the color. We've got plenty of time, so we're doing real good. There, it's looking real cute, I like it. Okay, so I'm gonna wash this little brush I've been using and go back to this one. So I already have white on it, I'm gonna load it up with some more white. And we're just going to make our way down. So remember we started with the forehead and we still need to get around this area. Right here I'm sort of flicking at an outward angle because as we start going down the face, here we were, we were going upward. As we start going down the face, the hairs, the fur is actually gonna start growing out to the side and then eventually growing more downward. So not like straight out to the side, it's kind of like down into the side. It's angling down towards this corner if that helps. Leave your shading, so just bring your white right up to that, like this. If your shading is too dark by the time you get this done, you can just mix a little bit lighter gray, and I'll show you that real quick because some of you might have to do it. Have a little bit lighter gray and just add some little bits of light gray fur in there so you're not like completely changing the color, but you might lighten it up a little. down there. Woo so same with this part, you want to leave a lot of that shading there because that's what's going to help define this edge. If we brought bright white right up to that, we would lose that. We don't want to do that. You can come pretty close though, just make sure you have a little bit of an outline of this gray. And if he looks like he's crying black tears, He's emo bear. <laughs> or we can, uh, like I said, just bring some lighter gray through here. Just brush it on a little. You don't have to cover every last little inch of the darker gray. It's an easy adjustment. Ah, he's looking so cute, I love it. Okay, let's fix up the ear now. I want it to look a little more furry than just kind of a dotted line on there. I'm going to use this brush. I need to wash that light gray off of it. You guys, when you're ready, you can do that too. What we're going to do next is we're going to just fluff out the edge of this ear so it looks more like this. And then we'll do what I was talking about earlier, how you see the difference up here, you've got very fluffy, soft fur, and then over here, it's a little more raggedy, which is fine. Raggedy's cute too, but I, I do like to show that when we've got time, I like to show that you can do uh, fluffier brush strokes too using a smaller brush. So let's take this brush, dip it in a little white. You don't need much. You can see I just put a little on here. And come around using the thin edge of this brush, just flicking it upwards and outward as I go around this ear. Now we know the ears are black, but just like I talked about with the shoulder, think of it like there's a light source that's 
It's just glancing off the edge and making that edge of this ear and shoulder stand out. Otherwise we wouldn't have an ear and it would look weird. It wouldn't be a panda, it'd be kind of weird ghost. <laughs> okay, that looks pretty good. We're gonna add lots of colors there. So you can leave it as it is and just plan on adding color. Let's go ahead and fluff out our panda. So using the same brush, the thin edge. Now, if you feel more comfortable using a round brush for this, go right ahead. You absolutely can. They're your brushes. You get to use them whenever you want. At whatever part of the painting you want to use them. So I'm just flicking some fur into the ear. A lot of times animals have longer fur right there. Let's see. Have a look at the panda. You have kind of short fur. I have a picture pulled up on my computer. I always like to do that to make sure I don't like miss anything important. And then yeah, fuzz out the edges. Make them short little fluffy brush strokes or you can make long fur. I've taught this one before with really long fur and it's so cute. DIY Panda. If you need to round out the head more, this is a good time to do it. I feel like I need another coating of white just at the very top edge here. One thing you'll notice is that paint dries, tends to dry a little bit more transparent. Like right now it's really pretty opaque, but as it dries, it'll be like, wait a minute, <laughs> that black is trying to poke through. So I'm gonna, now down here, the brush strokes are going to start going kind of downwards and maybe even towards this side. I like to do that because, well, their hair fur grows that way. And then also it makes him look really soft and fluffy. Maybe I'll get another little coating of white on this lower lip so I don't lose it in this stuff. We'll get a mouth on there in a few. Now, if you need to fluff out the shoulder, you can do that. We'll get a nice shine on the nose. We can actually do that now. And then we're gonna start colorizing. Okay, so we wanna pick up one of our smallish round brushes. So you've got lots to choose from, as you know. Um, you can use a really tiny one. This is the two slash zero, but I'll just use this number five. And I want to take white, just pick up a tiny bit. You see how I have just a little tiny bit on the tip of the bristles. So you want to just do a nice shine. So think about our light source up here somewhere. So we're going to get shine on the nose here, especially, and maybe a little over here. So that's all we need to do, unless you want to look at a picture of Panda and paint the nostrils. If you do that, make sure you do really like small white circles for the nostrils so that you don't end up with uh, something that's gonna like draw all the attention to the painting, to the nose. So a little simple highlight is easy enough to do. And we can go ahead and add the mouth now. Maybe use that small same small brush. And let's use black. And we're gonna draw a straight line down the bottom of this kind of heart shape. And then right here, it's gonna split. See how I sometimes I'll dip my brush in the paint and then I sort of spread it out on the palette. You guys have a little bit different palette than I do. I know you have the little scooped palettes, but you've got room to do that. That just helps knock off any excess paint that maybe I didn't need. <laughs> So depending on how far up you go here on the sides, your panda can be really smiling. <laughs> you can leave it like this, but one of the things I think is really cute is to come down here like so, because I've seen a bunch of pictures of pandas and they, the ones that have their mouths kind of slightly open or they have like fur down in here that's dark. So it looks like they have a slightly open mouth. <laughs> They're just so cute. Yeah, that's about all I need for now. Okay, finish that up. If 
you need, if you make a mistake here, just let it dry while we work on something else and you can go back and the black will be dry and you can correct it with some white or paint over it and redo it. But don't try to correct it while this black is still wet or it will make it a lot more difficult for yourself. Just letting it dry for 10 minutes is all you need and it, the correction will be very simple. I'm just washing my big brush off and let's get some color going. But that's one of the things I love about this panda is we get to colorize him and make him super fun. So most of that I'm gonna do with this number four brush or you've got another one very similar. What did I say that was number eight or six? Yeah, either one of these two. And I'm gonna start with, I'm just thinking here, what color do you, you know, I'm gonna start with pink and move on from there. So you can, if you wanna make a lighter pink, scrape a little of that off, scrape a little white off, mix the two together. And you can adjust it. If you want it lighter, just add more white. If you want it darker, add more of that back in. But I think of this like, maybe there's some, maybe this guy is at like a disco party <laughs> and there's colorful, he's at a roller skating rink and there's colorful lights coming off a disco ball or something. And so he's getting bits of those colors reflected onto the white fur. And I, I did a whole series when I had my open studio where I did a whole series of colorful animals. So that's part of the reason why this one is so colorful is because it went along with that series, but also it, it changes it up and makes it really fun. So, and you can just, you can add, you don't have to do like go all along the side. You can skip some parts and like maybe put some here, along here, add some blush, <laughs> put some pink along there. And this is how I colorize this guy. So I, I did a little pink. Now I'm gonna wash the brush. Let's see what happens when I mix a little turquoise into that. I think I was just telling you earlier, it makes kind of a grayish lavender. And you can adjust that by adding more or less of each color. Yeah, it's not a super intense lavender. It's really subtle. So you can add any of that wherever you want. Bits of color. And the nice thing is you can always go back when you're finished adding all the colors and maybe you're thinking to yourself, well, you know, I, I really would like some more pink on there or some more turquoise. You can always go back and do that. Just layer it on top or layer it surrounding the other colors. Now I'm going to go with just this straight turquoise. It's called Bahama Blue. It's one of my all time favorite colors. I just think it's so pretty and it's opaque so you can paint it right over black. So it's not like a super see-through transparent color. But it is one of those colors that it's, it's gonna stand out. So make sure you really like it <laughs> if you're gonna put this on here because you can see how much it stands out. It is very vivid. Now as I get down here and I've added some colors, I'm gonna start Moving towards the inside part of the, or just moving away from the edges of the bear, you can bring some of the color in here more. And if you feel at any point that your bear, oh, it's too colorful, I want it back, or it's more black and white and gray, just let everything dry and then layer some white back on there. I'm a big fan of color though, so I am going to add a lot of color. I am keeping a lot of this color on this this left side of the snout. You could bring it over here, but I like to think of it like like there's something colorful, like, a, like I said, like a disco ball or something that's coming in as a, as a light source. I'm gonna wash the brush. And let's mix some more colors for fun. Okay, so we've got 
I was telling you earlier at the beginning of the video, if you mix this and this, it makes the most amazing green. So I use a little more yellow than blue or turquoise. So I scrape off a little less turquoise and look at that. It is so pretty. I just love that color. You can also add a drop of water to your paint if you feel like it's gotten kind of thick. They're water soluble, so you can thin them out as much as you want. But look at that on there. That's fun. I'm just going to sort of go in between and around some of these other colors. You can go right over the turquoise if you want in any area. This over the pink is going to turn a little bit muddy, so I try to avoid painting it directly over the pink. Just adding bits, bits of color. Don't know what I was doing there. <laughs> Funny. Um, you can add some color on this part too. Don't want to get this one left out. <laughs> I'm always doing those little same fur like brush strokes that we have been doing throughout this whole painting. So it's just like we're adding just colorful bits of fur. Now I'm going to wash the brush and I'll show you another color you can add. This one's going to end up being a bit darker, but you can change it up and make it lighter. Uh, if you really like the color coral or peach, these two mixed together makes a really nice coral. So I use a little more yellow than this pink. But look at that, you got it. Right now I have kind of a pumpkin orange. I could add white to it and make it peach. If I add a little more pink, it becomes more coral right here. So look, I have half and half. <laughs> And you can use either of those colors on the face. So we just put green on, if you did that with me. The green with this, the two wet colors together make, turn sort of muddy, brownish. And so you might add this coral a little bit later after your green is completely dried. It does not take long, maybe five minutes or so. Or if you can manage it, painting some of these like in between and in other areas where there is no um, green <laughs> or turquoise. It kind of turns muddy over turquoise too. Technicolor Panda. Lastly, you can add yellow. This might be the most colorful version I've done of this, <laughs> which is kind of fun. So I'll, I'll do some yellow now. Yellow can go around, on top of, in between. And you can do just about any animal painting with these kind of colors because you don't, when you're painting, you don't have to follow the rules of nature. You can do a blue lion if you always wanted a blue lion. So I've done a lion, I've done a giraffe, I've done an owl. I'm trying to think what other animal. We did a whole safari thing with this style of being brightly colored and it is really fun. Hopefully you guys had fun too. Now you can go back at any time after, you want this to mostly dry, but if you, let's say maybe, oh, I lost this. You can highlight the edge of this with white. Cause I kind of lost mine a little bit as I started adding some of the colors in there. Same with down here. And uh, other things you can add. We'll see how we're doing time-wise. Oh good, we're almost done. Okay, so we are done with the panda unless you wanna add anything else. Um, other things you can do is you can shade with light gray, this little mustache area, they do have that, but I think it looks fine without. Another thing I love to do is because we're kind of in this dark, dark background, I will use the handle of one of my small brushes and just dot little white stars all over 
in the background on you know t- above the head and around the ear and it can just look like our our panda's out having a little forest party at night eating all the bamboo parting it up with the other animals in their disco ball stars are so easy to do and the cool thing is is if if you get it done and you think i really wish i hadn't painted stars let them dry paint black over them let's do a little coating of black but i'm sure most of you guys will think stars are pretty fun but yeah you can you can do other things in the background you could do designs in the background you know little polka dots or something doesn't have to just be stars but that's it. He looks really cute. You wanna make sure and sign your painting. Like down in this corner is a perfect spot or down here you can do your initials or your first initial, last name, whatever whatever you want your artist's signature to be. And if you need to go back and correct anything, you can do it forever. You can like have this painting just be an evolving process. So I hope you guys had fun. I had a lot of fun painting this one again. It's, it's probably been five years or so since I painted it and uh, Actually, it's been a little bit less than that, but it feels like it's been a lot longer. Anyway, hope you guys have a wonderful spring break, and we'll be see you for the next project. Bye!